Hey everyone, Alex at BP Auto Sports here again for another tech video. In this video we're going to discuss radiators, single pass, dual pass, the differences between the two of them and how to construct a radiator. Now as this video progresses we'll actually be constructing the radiator that will go in the rear of my Supra. So why don't we take a walk over to the welding bench and I'll show you the parts and materials that we're working with. And here we have all the materials that will be involved with building this radiator. At the heart of it is a Bell Intercoolers radiator core. And this core is 24 inches long, 16 inches tall, and two and a half inches thick. To go along with that, I have a few pieces of 60,000th aluminum sheet metal, and then two number 16 ORB weld bungs. And that'll be the inlet and outlet on each one of the tanks. So this radiator will be a dual pass, hence why I have one longer section here, and then two shorter sections here. Now a normal single pass radiator is what you tip <clears throat> Now a single pass radiator is what you typically have on most street cars and you'll see it pretty frequently in aftermarket radiators. A single pass means that it's passing once through the radiator core. So oftentimes you'll have an inlet or outlet on one side or the corner of one side and an inlet or outlet on the bottom corner of the other side. And this design forces water one time across the radiator core, giving it one chance to cool. A dual pass radiator operates a little bit differently than the single pass that we just covered. Rather than forcing water across the radiator core once, you effectively divide one of the cores in half, which will have water come in, force it once across the radiator core, down this side water tank, back across the radiator to the outlet on the same side. And the reason for doing this is you cause the water to go across the radiator two times, giving it two chances to have ambient air rush through it, two chances to cool off. And this in turn should create a radiator that's a bit more efficient than its single pass counterpart. Now I've done a little blueprint here of the dimensions of one of the water tanks. And these dimensions will allow me to build both the two water tanks that go on the inlet and outlet side, as well as the large single water tank that goes on the receiving side of water. So now that I have my dimensions, why don't we go ahead and trace them out on the pieces of sheet metal and start cutting. And there we have all the pieces marked out. The X corners of each piece will be removed, and these Sharpie lines here will serve as the brake lines. Now what I'm doing with these end tanks, as opposed to cutting individual pieces and welding them all together, is putting them in my sheet metal brake and actually bending the pieces into shape to help eliminate the number of welds that will be done and to make the tanks a little bit stronger. So now that we have our cut lines established, let's go ahead and cut the corners out of them and get them ready to go into the brake. And now we're over at the brake. You can see I still have my brake lines on here. And I have the brake all set up. This is a box and pan brake, which that means you have removable fingers. So that way you don't have to contend with a piece like this, where these two sides will be broken up and it would be impossible to break this edge on a normal, regular sheet metal brake. So this machine is actually pretty cool. It's a three-in-one sheet metal tool, sheet metal machine from Ye Old Harbor Freight. So there's the details of it right there. And on the top here, you have a slip roll. So that's used to form cones, to form tubes. Uh, on this side, it has little notches to roll wire, if you would choose. Put the lid back up. Uh, on the bottom side, Kind of hard to see. If I raise it up and see that there is actually a shear down there on the bottom. So you can cut some thinner pieces of sheet metal with it. And then in the center, we have the sheet metal brake. So the way that I'm doing this, I'm going to break either long side 
first. That'll be done on this side of the brake where I still have all the fingers attached. Then I'll move on and break the ends up. And those will be done over here with this singular finger over here. All three pieces have gone through the brake now. You can see they're not exactly perfect. That brake isn't exactly the best brake. So this little bit of deformation here where my thumb is can be fixed by putting it in my trusty vise here, true it up, and then dolling it a little bit as it goes onto the radiator core itself. But with these pieces formed, it's now time to weld these seams up. We have all of our tanks welded up now. You can see that they do fit pretty well in the core, aside from having to dolly the sides in a little bit. Other thing to note is you can see the water passages there, and as this comes down, it does not impede with the water passages. So you really don't want to overlap those and cause one of these tubes to be invalid. So from here, now what we need to do is to put the two number 16 female ORB bungs in here so that way water can get in and out of this. We now have holes in these two water tanks that accommodate these number 16 ORB female weld lungs. You can see they sit in there real nice. Inside of it there you can see the penetration in all of the corners of that one. Bung on there. Bung in. Penetration on this one. So now what I'll do is tack weld these bungs in and then tack these to the core before I start welding them. So that way I don't cause any undue deformation or any additional deformation on the tanks themselves.
and it's all tacked up. You can see that this one that was quite deformed tacked up pretty nicely, nice and straight. These ones are pretty nice and straight here too. A little bit of a gap there, but that can be solved with some filler rod. So now, I believe it is time to begin welding it. And there we have it. Radiator's all welded up. You can see this weld right here. That is the division between these two water tanks. And like I said earlier, water will come in here, go across the radiator, down this tank, then back across the radiator again. So they aren't the prettiest welds that I've ever done. But these radiator cores are notoriously difficult to weld. And at some point in the future, I'll have to put a 3 8 NPT female bung in here somewhere for the coolant sensor, the coolant temperature sensor, for the fans that I have. But for the time being, it's all welded up and is ready to go up in the car so I can figure out exactly how I'm going to mount it. Hopefully this video gave you a little bit of insight in regards to what's involved with putting a radiator together. Now we'll revisit the radiator at a later date when I determine exactly what I'm going to do in regards to a fan shroud. But for the time being, I've gone as far as I can with this radiator with the materials that I had at my disposal. I'd like to give a shout out to Bell Intercoolers for providing awesome radiator cores that make assembling your own radiator a breeze. But for now, that's all that I have for you guys. So until next time, peace.